Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our second academic resources webinar. My name is Samuel Schallenberger. I am the Assistant Director for Orientation and Student Development in our College Programming and Orientation Office. We are doing these webinars all summer long as a part of our Orientation Summer Series, and they are all recorded and posted on our website shortly after. So if you need to hop out at any point during today or want to check out the ones that we have already had this month so far, you are going to be able to see that on our website, which I will put in the chat in just a minute. Um, today, we have our College Center for Research and Fellowships, as well as university libraries here with us, and several special guests here speak all about them. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the Q&A function. We will be tackling those at the end of the presentations today, and we will be able to also type some answers. If you have really specific questions you want answered before you go, please make sure that you do not leave here with a question. And after that, I'm just going to pass it on over to Nicole and Arthur from CC and then we will get on to university libraries. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, Samuel, and thanks to everyone for joining us. If you'll bear with me, I'm going to just share my screen and we will get started. So uh, as Samuel's just mentioned, um, I'm here with my colleague, uh, Dr. Arthur Salvo, to introduce you briefly and very briefly to the College Center for Research and Fellowships. Uh, hopefully our name clues you in about what we're gonna be talking to you very briefly about, and that is undergraduate research and national fellowships. And I'm gonna start by focusing on research and then I'll hand it over to Arthur to talk a little bit more about how we support students applying for major national fellowships. So introduction to us, the CCRF is our acronym. You will get used to and familiar with acronyms as undergraduates at UChicago. We're gonna talk about undergraduate research. And as I said, introduce you to the support that we provide for national scholarships and fellowships, that is students who are interested in applying to those throughout their undergraduate career. Who we are in alphabetical order, and this is the team that comprises the College Center for Research and Fellowships. These are educators, a group of hardworking advisors, and I should note that all of us meet with students and support students in various ways in undergraduate research and national fellowships. Um, we are all um, scholars in our own fields and also benefit from the tremendous support of graduate students and undergraduates. Uh, who do contribute to the work that we do as well. So what do we do? Uh, this is our mission statement. You can find this more or less uh, expanded on, uh, on our website, but shorthand, we're committed to academic excellence. And we believe that that can be accomplished in a variety of ways, but in our work, uh, we attach uh, that to participating in what we consider transformative educational experiences, initially and fundamentally through undergraduate research, but then in the context of nationally competitive fellowships, which actually come as a result of committing yourselves to academic excellence more broadly. We do promote and support making meaningful connections with faculty um, through research, but then also through your classroom engagement, as well as through your academic colleagues and other forms of educators on campus. And you're gonna be hearing from one of our most important colleagues, Rebecca Starkey, um, who is one of our colleagues as a fellow educator equally committed to undergraduate research and academic excellence. So I'm expanding that discussion to include faculty as well as other academic advisors and educators on campus. We do provide high impact and intensive advising and Arthur will talk a little bit more about that in the context of fellowships. And then we spend a fair amount of time educating your community, which is to say others at the University of Chicago about the various opportunities for college students and recent alum. So who do we support? All students, college students across all disciplines and recent alums of the college. And that is a fairly large charge for a relatively small team. And we've crafted some pretty um, intensive and intentionally created systems to support that work. So I'm gonna focus on undergraduate research. What you're seeing here uh, is a definition of what we mean by undergraduate research. And as Samuel mentioned, we'll have time for questions at the end. So please do feel free to ask them along the way in the chat, and then we'll answer them uh, once we finish talking with you. Uh, you can also see photographs of the different kinds of undergraduate research that is going on around the University of Chicago and in fact, beyond. We define undergraduate research as a scholarly or creative investigation that contributes to the system, the systematic production of new knowledge. You are at a research one or you will be at a research one university, which principal work is the creation of new knowledge. Undergraduate research invites you into that work when it is done under the guidance of faculty 
or other research mentors, and that might be at the SMART Museum, that might be in the Department of Sociology, that might be at the um, CPOST, the Chicago um, Center, I'm not going to quite get this acronym right, uh, faculty-led organization that studies security and terrorism here on campus. So a myriad of opportunities to work alongside research mentors, um, research scholars, in contributing to that knowledge production. Uh, we do believe that undergraduate research enriches the college academic curriculum. And in fact, there are different ways now that you'll start to see research embedded within the curriculum. I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. And that it enhances the broader experience that you are going to have here in Chicago by introducing you to tools, to skills, to new ways of thinking, to asking good questions, uh, and to benefiting from essentially apprenticing to faculty who are in the thick of making that new knowledge possible and accessible more broadly. So that's how we define undergraduate research. How do we do this support of undergraduate research? And uh, I have a colleague who's largely in charge of making all of this happen, Dr. Andrew Karras. We provide actually advising quarterly information sessions and individual advising, especially for those of you who are coming into the institution this fall. Please uh, plan to attend one of our information sessions, which is precisely about how does one get involved in undergraduate research at the University of Chicago. We support a number of research programs. We have a summer institute happening right now in the arts, humanities, and social sciences for students in those fields to do research. Uh, we support pairing uh, opportunities with faculty within the labs. Uh, we host a number of grant programs and the undergraduate research symposium. So those of you who um, will be on campus, and presumably most of you will still be on campus in May of your first year, please come to the symposium. It will be the best way for you to find out all that's going on in undergraduate research at UChicago. Um, as I mentioned, we support a number of grant and scholars programs, and then we help your faculty as they build new opportunities, as they think about bringing undergraduates into their research. We help them in the departmental space as they do in fact design more programs specific to, to students who are in their fields or in their disciplines. So there's a constant growth in the work of undergraduate research uh, here at UChicago. Very, very briefly, here's our website. As I said, as you're an incoming student, best thing to do is to start to read all the information that is out there uh, about the offices and opportunities that are going to be at your disposal once you arrive. This is where I would invite you to start reading about what are the benefits of doing undergraduate research. And then you'll see on that um, navigation bar, uh, a number of links that are gonna direct you toward getting a better sense of what it means to get involved in undergraduate research from the very beginning, clean on down through research grant programs, what we understand to be research ethics and best practices. And then of course, all of the different programs that we support. So first place to start. And then I would say, as I've already mentioned, please plan to attend one of the information sessions that you'll learn all about in October when you join us on campus. Um, we look forward to seeing you there. The last thing I wanted to highlight, simply because you're incoming students, we're going to be thinking a lot about majors. It's a relatively new major that was lifted up in the last year and a half that in fact centers research as its principal charge. And it is specific for students in the humanities, although we take students from across disciplines who are interested in really spending their entire undergraduate degree learning what it means to do research and ask questions in the context of the humanities. And so it is a self-designed major with requirements specific to research design. We support our students in faculty research appointments and make sure that they have all the financial resources they need to undertake fairly significant research starting already in the second year of the major. That is a very broad stroke introduction to undergraduate research. Uh, and we're happy to answer questions. But with that, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, uh, Arthur, to talk with you a little bit about national fellowships. Thanks so much, Nicole. Um, so, for the you know, first thing I want to do is welcome all of you. I'm, you know, we're so excited that you'll be joining us uh, this upcoming autumn. Um, and I want to kind of you know start with this question about what fellowships are. So you've probably or maybe have heard of fellowships like the Rhodes Scholarship or like Fulbright where you've heard people referred to as being Fulbrighters. And so what exactly is meant by that? Um, so fellowships are merit-based awards that enable students to pursue a variety of educational experiences. And that's really at the heart of it. So I wanna to talk to you about a, a few categories that we can think about. So a fellowship can enable a student to attend graduate school or attend graduate school free. 
Um, they can make it you know, possible for students to take part in international study and in language training. Uh, they also make it possible for students to pursue advanced research, and that could be domestically here in the United States or abroad, as well as to embark on a life that's dedicated to public service. And so really, when we're talking about fellowships, they are extremely broad. They are, you do not need to have a 3.9 GPA to apply for all of them. Um, they support students in all disciplines. But the key thing to think about here is that selection is really based on students' potential or your potential as evidenced by your previous accomplishments and also what you, you will do here at the University of Chicago, because that essentially is the track record that establishes what you care about, what you're interested in, and the amount of time that you've invested in those pursuits. And then the other key component to fellowships is academic excellence. They are looking for scholars, for students who are dedicated to the fields that they are studying. So what's that look like at the University of Chicago? And here you can see you Chicago students who have gone on to be national scholars. So we have Goldwater scholars who have done innovative research in STEM fields and are preparing to pursue a PhD. We have students who are Truman scholars who have dedicated their lives to the betterment of others in the public good and who will attend graduate school and then go on to careers that are gonna allow them to make lives better for others. There are students who are exceptional leaders, who are exceptional in their research and who also want to make the world a better place. And they are going on or have gone on in the past to become Marshall scholars and Rhodes scholars. But we also have students here who are Schwarzman scholars who go on to study in China. Um, we have, we have Boren scholars who are listed here who go on to spend a year living in another country and immersing themselves in its culture and its languages. There are, there's a Carnegie scholar here who has gone on to work at the think tank um, in Washington DC working with fellows. And then we also have Fulbrighters, like Hennessy students, but most importantly, when you take a look at these faces, of students from UChicago from all different fields. If you look at the bottom right corner, I think I also wanna highlight to you the community that the College Center for Research and Fellowships fosters among applicants as well as their, made, as well as their mentors. And that term fellowship is as much about aspiration towards something in the future that you want to, that you want to make possible or you want to bring into being or realize. It's as much about your character and realizing your own potential as a person as it is about connecting with others and feeling that connection as fellowship. So um, you know, now that you have a kind of sense of what fellowships are and what this can look like at UChicago, I think it's important to talk about how CCRF, the College Center for Research and Students, uh, Research and Fellowship supports students. So the kind of beginning part is, is with education. Right. So we run quarterly information sessions about the select national fellowships that we support. And in those sessions, we try to help students get a sense of whether they are, whether this fellowship is a right match for your vision for yourself and the things that you want to achieve and what the fellowship is looking for. We're looking for students who, or we want students to help sort and figure out this is what really will help me achieve my future goals and maybe not this one. The second part is once you've committed and decided to, to apply for a fellowship, we get in the trenches with you. And so that means that we mentor candidates. Um, we read their writing. We do draft review with them. We help them to put together their very best application possible. And that means also helping them to think about themselves and engaging in intensive self-reflection. Um, Another part of this is, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the kind of writing and revision supports so are starting with a document and refining it so that it connects with an audience and is compelling and helps others to understand what your case is, but also interview preparation. So for those fellowships where there is an interview, we help students to go in there with confidence and have a sense of how to navigate that conversation and make it work to their advantage. And then lastly, we also, um, you know, bring together faculty, uh, for, for nomination committees so that the students who apply for fellowships um, not only have faculty recommenders who are, who, are, 
who are their champions, but that they also get that they get also get uh, feedback from from staff and from faculty here at the university who can help them um, improve their applications. So, you know, if you're curious, and I really hope you are about about the fellowships that CCRF supports. My first recommendation is you go to our website, ccrf.uchicago.edu, and if you click on National Fellowships, there's a drop-down menu you can click on, on select scholarships and fellowships and see um, extensive profiles of the different fellowships that we support, what they're looking for, and you can start to map out um, you know, you know, in which years you might be eligible and when to get started. So that's, you know, that's one part. Um, I think another is to think about, okay, I'm a first year student. I'm curious about fellowships. What are the things that I can do now as somebody who's just about to start to join the University of Chicago to put me in a great position to bark on this kind of journey? First thing that I can recommend is just like Nicole said for undergraduate research, participate in relevant CCRF info sessions. So on our website, we have these quarterly info, info sessions as well as writing workshops. Even if you are not eligible yet because you're a first year and you won't be until your third or fourth year, I would encourage you to attend because there is so much you can learn about what these fellowships are looking for or what they offer. And that can inspire different choices that you make. Right? If you're interested in something, you can, um, you can make strategic decisions about the kind of coursework you take, the relationships you build. Next, I wanna let you in on two different secrets. Secret number one, you're gonna arrive here at the University of Chicago in late September, probably, you know, or, you know, and things will start up in October and you will have many different ways that you can spend your time, but you've actually got two jobs or two priorities. The first is to do the very best that you can in your coursework. And the second is to make it your job to develop a meaningful relationship with your instructors, with faculty, and yes, also with staff such as the library who can help you grow as students. These are your two key jobs and everything else attaches to that, but that should be the center of your work here. The second thing is that now that you're here, the game has changed. So what got you here was likely the supposition that UChicago and other schools are looking for well-rounded students. And what that meant was you did the very best you could in the, in the most difficult classes you could take and you took them all and you probably had a lot of other commitments. But what's key for fellowships is not doing 10 different things in a, you know, in, in, in a distracted way, but stepping back, thinking about what you really love, what sets your, your heart and your mind on fire, both academically and extracurricularly, and to go deeper in those things. So focus on your academic interests. If there's a class that you really love, take time to think about why it is you love about it and what it's meaningful and how to connect with those topics in further coursework. And if there are other activities you're engaged with on campus, my suggestion is not to do 10, but to do two or three really well and to go deeper because those are the experiences that are gonna enable you to um, develop key skills that you'll need in the future. So, to get started, I would suggest that you go to our website, ccrf.uchicago.edu, and click on the info sessions workshop and series. For example, we have we will have Truman sessions coming up in July, and then at some point in September, you will start to see this page loaded up with all the sessions that we're going to be offering in autumn, and we're really looking forward to seeing you there. And I hope that you'll be able to join us. Lastly, before I send things over back to, to Rebecca, um, we are currently remote, and, but we, are, we do have support that's available virtually. So there is our, our website that Nicole and I have both mentioned. There is the listserv that we would encourage you to sign up for. You will get the most up-to-date information regarding um, uh, uh, 
uh, undergraduate research programs as well as fellowships that come out and frankly also stories about students and other opportunities that we hope that you'll connect with. Um, Nicole, I didn't know if you wanted to cover the workshops and info series regarding undergrad research. Yeah, and so just to reinforce what Arthur's saying about being remote, of course, we were all remote for two years, but one of the things I do want to point out is that actually our lives, especially in the summertime, was always remote. We have the privilege of working with students 12 months of the year, and of course, everyone is somewhere else during the summer. So we continue to support students by Zoom. Before Zoom, it was Skype. So we are all hands on deck in the summer and really do welcome the chance to connect and support students across the duration of an academic year, which for us includes the summertime. So when we say remote, that's what we mean. But in the fall, happily, we will all be back in person. And a lot of our sessions will be available in person. Uh, we also have a resource library, which we didn't mention, but that's where all of these recorded sessions live. You could listen to um, dozens of things to your heart's content. But uh, specific to undergraduate research, as I mentioned, every quarter we have an introduction to undergraduate research, how to get started, in the winter time, we offer sessions on how to secure grants. In the springtime, we're getting students ready for the symposium. How do you present your research? How do you disseminate it productively? Uh, and so all of these things will be, as Arthur said, up on our calendar. Um, actually, in the fairly short order, by the end of July, you'll be able to see a pretty good, pretty good menu of what's coming during the academic year of 22-23. I think that's it for us for now. We're going to pass it on to Rebecca and then jump back in and answer specific questions at the end. Hello, everybody. I'm really happy to, to meet with all of you today and to talk a little bit about the library, um, which is another great resource for you to use um, and prepare for some of these academic uh, experiences and research experiences when you're here at the University of Chicago. So let me share my slides. Okay. So I am here to talk specifically about the library and it's a really essential part of your experience at the University of Chicago Library. And I know many of you probably have seen um, some of the campus libraries either on a tour or uh, perhaps you've explored um, videos online. And we have six campus libraries that are open to students um, and each one of them has their own focus and specialties. Uh, most are popular libraries on campus, and most of the ones that you're probably familiar with are the Joe and Rika Mansueto libraries, which are shown here, and it's on the left. And then the other library is the Joseph Reigenstein Library, uh, commonly called the REG, that is shown here on the right. Uh, but we have many other libraries on campus that have other needs. Um, our John Carrar Library is very popular with STEM majors, and um, some of our smaller libraries are popular with students like Eckert, which provides a nice quiet place to read and work on math sets. But the University of Chicago Library is really much more than a study space. The library is where you can go to for the materials you need for your coursework and assignments throughout your time at the university. One of the first things that you're likely to need from the library are course readings. And for many classes, you can access your readings directly through Canvas, which is the online course system. Most items will be available online on e-reserve, meaning that they're available right there and then. Some other items may be on short loan at our campus libraries, um, two to four hour loans to provide equal access to all students in the course to the books and materials that are needed. If you're looking for textbooks for your course, you can check the library catalog on our website to see if the book that you need is held by the library. The catalog will tell you where the book's located and if it's available for you to check out. And you can retrieve the book from your, by yourself from the stacks, which can be a really great way to find other books on a topic. But if you prefer, you can request items using our paging and pickup service. But there's no limit on the number of items you can check out. And although that we have one due date per quarter, if you still have items checked out, they will auto renew for the whole academic year. So you can really get whatever you need through the library. 
If a book's checked out or the library doesn't have the book that you need, we can request a copy through our interlibrary loan services. You just place a request and the library will work with another library to obtain a copy of the book from another institution, and then it will be sent here and held for you for pickup. You can request as many items as you like. So this really opens up almost the entire country of the libraries around the country to get materials. And we have agreements with the Ivy League schools and the Big Ten schools to borrow materials quickly and easily from them. So you have this huge network of libraries that you can get materials from in just a few days. If you need just a chapter or two of a book, you can take our uh, use our free scan and deliver service, and uh, that is a, a free service that will scan a couple of chapters of a book that you need, and we'll do it for free. Um, it, we can't scan the entire book. Uh, there's copyright issues that prevent that, but it's a really great way to save time and money, and um, you can just request what you want, and we'll scan it and send it to you. In addition to the books at our campus libraries, and we have over 7 million books at our campus libraries, we, we have also have ebooks. Um, ebooks are a great way to access our collections from anywhere, but each one has different restrictions on its use. So you may be able to download certain parts of it, or you may be able to um, download the whole book depending on um, which platform it's on. But we have lots of help available. There's a guide that you can turn to, as well as our librarians, if you have any questions. If you need academic journal articles for your assignments, you can use one of our many research tools that we have available in our database. Uh, some good places to start are under our quick links section that have um, uh, that you can just use to find different articles on the topic, uh, on a topic that you're interested by, or on a uh, author that you're interested in. And we can, you can just put in the title and search for the article. Um, so Articles Plus, JSTOR, you may be familiar with. These are great resources that you can use um, for uh, looking for academic journal articles. Most of our library databases have a little icon called Find It that you can um, see with the University of Chicago crest on it. And that connects you to our different subscriptions that are available. Um, we subscribe to publications from various um, publishers and that Find It will connect you to where we have access. If there's an online version of an article, you can find that right on top. Uh, find it will direct you right into that article. If not, I will look in our print collection to see if there's a version that you can request through scan and deliver. And if not, we again can get a copy from another institution. Usually within 24 hours, we can get a scan of a needed article. All these services, of course, are free. Need to read a newspaper? Um, we now subscribe to um, the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post websites. So you don't need your own subscriptions. You can uh, log in through the library to access these great newspapers. We also have newspaper databases that will provide access to international news from around the world and also historical newspapers. So those are the things that you most likely would need for your class, but we also have a lot of resources that are great for these research opportunities that Nicole and Arthur just discussed. So whether you're starting your first research paper for a class or embarking on a formal research experience, the library can really help you as you embark on this new process of academic research and writing. To help you get started, the library has an extensive collection of help guides for every ne nearly every subject or major at the University of Chicago. And these guides can be really wonderful for helping you get started. They're created by librarians who specialize in the particular field. And your librarian will direct you to the best resources to locate information on that topic. There are also sections on each guide for finding different types of primary resources that are available in our library. 
And we have amazing print and digital collections from around the world in hundreds of different languages. Uh, we have some of the country's largest collections of materials from Eastern Europe, Southern Asia, or East Asia. And all of these are available for you to check out from our book stacks. We also have digital collections that are available through our research guides. So if you're applying for a Fulbright um, grant to go work in China, you can explore our collections in our East Asian collection and uh, prepare for your uh, experience, learn more about the country. And um, there's lots of wonderful things that you can use for various research projects. Beyond the book stacks, our Hannah Holborn Gray Special Collections Research Center is really the jewel in the crown of the library. It houses the library's rare books, manuscripts, and archive collections. And all of these are available for your research. It's not a museum. It's a working collection that you can use for any assignment that you have or just your own interest. So we have rare books, uh, early printed books, jazz music, zines, artist books, all sorts of wonderful collections. We also hold the papers of University of Chicago departments and faculty members, as well as collections about the city of Chicago, like the Ida B. Wells Barnett papers are housed in our Hannah Holborn Gray Special Collections Research Center. If you're a STEM major or a data intensive major, our librarians can provide guidance on how to identify, locate, work with, and communicate with data. The library supports GIS or Geographic Information Systems, and we have a special lab in Karar Library dedicated to GIS and with all the software installed to help you collect, manage, analyze, and visualize spatial data. Of course, every major that you are or subject that you're working on will be different. There'll be different types of sources that you need to find. So we do have lots of resources on our website. You can visit our other help guides to help you find anything from artwork to video games. Uh, we also have guides to help you develop different research skills, like how do you cite resources. Uh, we have a great uh, software that we support called Zotero, which is a free resource that you can use to collect and organize and cite sources in your various papers or projects. And we provide classes and workshops and support for that, uh, as well as many other tools and software to support research. So check out our website and you'll find a lot more. But really, um, my number one tip for all of you is to keep calm and ask a librarian if you need help. Uh, our library is very large, it's very complex, and it can be very overwhelming at first, but you don't have to need, feel intimidated by the complexity. Um, there are lots of people who are available to help you. Uh, if you have a quick question, we have Ask a Librarian links throughout our website that allow you to text or chat with a librarian live. You can also send us emails and we'll get back to you about any question or um, concern that you may have about the library. But reflecting back on what Arthur was talking about, we are also really great resources for you as you embark on some of these research experiences. And um, I really recommend that you get to know your library experts. Uh, there is a librarian that supports every college major or department. Uh, for example, here's Emily Trepto, who's one of our economics librarians, and we're happy to talk with you. We have a lot of knowledge about the institution, collections, not just at the University of Chicago, but in other libraries around the country or around the world. And we also have relationships with faculty. So reach out. You can send us an email, call us, or um, there's often an appointment scheduler on any of our research guides that you can just set up a time to meet one-on-one -on -one with your librarian and get to know what that's available for you to use and explore. Librarians can be a really key part of your academic success. We're just really, our primary job is to help you develop the skills necessary to become a successful researcher, to succeed in these research experiences on campus, to um, be successful in your applications for various research fellowships, we're here for you. And we can also help with uh, research for extracurricular activities, uh, career planning, and much more. So do reach out to us. We're around. We're happy to chat with you. We love working with students. 
So I hope this helped you learn a little bit more about the library. I see there's some questions already in Q&A, um, and I'm sure we'll, we can answer many more. Um, some of the resources that I'm showing you today are not yet available to you as an incoming student, but as soon as you're registered fully for classes, you'll have access to the full suite of resources available to you through the library. Uh, in the meantime, you can feel free to explore our website and search our catalog, which is open to everybody. Um, if you want to learn more, we do have an online orientation guide that has links to our Canvas course, as well as our YouTube channel that has lots of resources to help you learn about the library, um, online tours, all sorts of things. So feel free to look around our website, check out our orientation guide, and we'll be able to um, provide a lot more information. Of course, you can also contact us now um, at any point if you have questions about the library. We're happy to answer those. So with that, I will stop my share and I will um, look to hear some of these questions. I'd see there's one for the CCRF already and also one for the library. So, Nicole, do you want to go first? Do you and Arthur? Sure. Yeah, I'll start with a question that's come in about how to identify or how we help students think about areas of research that they might want to pursue. So I think one of the most important things is just to go back and reinforce what Arthur has said, and that is your first job when you get to campus is to get your feet under you, to get to classes, to pay attention to the courses you're enjoying, to connect with the faculty that you are really um, kind of thriving and learning under. Um, a lot of your first year is about getting a sense of what you're interested in. What we cannot do is help a student who simply walks in and says, I want research. We need you to do some of the work of thinking about what you're interested in, what you care about, come to one of our information sessions. And then after you do that, um, Andrew and myself will meet with you to talk about some of your interests and to help you think about when the right time is. A question embedded in here that isn't explicit is when should I do undergraduate research? And the answer to that question is when the time is right for you. Depending on your major, like computer science, you may need to take courses three actually generally in sequence to get ready to be able to do work with a faculty member. The other thing I wanna just acknowledge, it's also kind of implicit in this question. We're not defining undergraduate research as something that you come up with on your own. We support students who are going to be working with faculty on faculty driven projects. Now that's not to say you may not advance something independently within that project. You might in fact go on and do a thesis. But in the very first instance, we're matching students and supporting students working with faculty, because by all means, are you not expected to create new knowledge? Your graduate student peers are likely not producing new knowledge. There's a lot you need to learn. And so one of the things I want to do is kind of relieve you of the pressure that you have to come up with the questions and you have to come up with the new ideas. You don't. You need to be curious, interested in working alongside faculty and learning what research is. Uh, and then eventually with the support of many, you'll be in a position to start to ask unique questions and help us think differently about the questions that we're asking. So I hope that answers some of the questions you asked and a few that you didn't. I'll take the next question about the library. I think I answered some of the parts about electronic resources, but if there's anything more specific that you're interested in, and uh, Esther, I'm happy to answer that. Um, in terms of ways that students can utilize the library that you that are surprising to them, I think that students are just not always aware of the great wealth of resources that are available through the library. Um, you know, uh, most of the students come in and utilize the spaces, but don't really utilize the resources as fully as they should. And some of that's just not knowing that they're there. Um, so working with our librarians to talk about what's available for various projects you're working on, or if you're interested in exploring research opportunities on campus and you'd like to do some reading or to see what types of primary sources are available that you might be able to work with hands-on, um, talk to our librarians and we will be happy to kind of showcase some of the resources that are there. Um, so I think asking a lot of good questions is it's helpful. Don't be afraid to approach. Um, we don't expect you to be experienced library users. We want you to come ask questions and we'll, we'll help prepare you and uh, make use of what's available. It, our library is not just for faculty and it's not just a study space. It is um, 
available for you. And um, it's amazing. Some of the projects that students come up with using the collections are amazing. Um, there's some things that uh, we are the only library that owns it perhaps in the world. And you might be the person to um, explore that source and write about it or um, present on it. So um, reach out and get some help. I think I'd take this next question that's about, is it possible to partake in more than one research fellowship? And the question, the answer is absolutely and yes, but probably not simultaneously. <laughs> so to give you a sense, we have a student who, uh, who went to Germany to, be, to, you know, to do cutting edge uh, uh, chemical research. He did that in the summer of his second year. And this person is now applying for actually multiple different fellowships that would enable him um, to pursue graduate study in the United Kingdom. And so, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, you could win a, you could, and in fact, that's something that, that we try to help students do. So, you know, for example, there's a, a fellowship called DAD Rise that's for students who are in STEM fields. You know, the barrier to entry is, is pretty low because you can start as a second year student and as a third year student and, as, and apply. And we help students to try to see that do, having the experience like that also, um, you know, makes you a better applicant for other STEM fellowships, for example, like Goldwater, like Astronaut, or if you combine that with foreign language study um, for Fulbright, which would enable you to do research again. Um, there's also NSF GRFB that you can apply for as a fourth year when you're applying to, to grad school. And so our objective here is not, you know, it's not just you choose one and then we set that aside. The students that we work with are, are frequent flyers, you could say, are involved with us across the duration of their time here in East Chicago. They work with us because not only the experiences, but the application processes themselves are enriching. And we are thrilled about that. And we hope that all of you here today would be excited about working with us and also with our, with our colleagues in the library too. So maybe I'll offer one other thought on that particular question and then answer the next one, which has to do with what we would call creative inquiry and a question specific to um, fields like journalism and film and many other kind of um, methodologies and, and research enterprises that happen in the arts. Um, so maybe just to follow on to what Arthur has said and to clarify something, um, one of the things that we're very committed to, as Arthur's already said, is depth of engagement. So what we are also committed to doing is supporting you in working with one faculty member or one research experience, that is to say a mentored experience, over a number of years. And one of the things I want to do now, and you'll probably hear us say this again, is to kind of invite you to separate academic undergraduate research from internships. You are actually being offered a very privileged opportunity to join a faculty member's work. And one of the things you cannot think of exclusively is, is, can I just do it for one quarter? Can I do it for even a year? Um, but rather be thinking about these as long-term commitments. And here's why. Those faculty members are going to mentor you and give a lot of themselves. And they're doing it for no other reason than because they believe in what they're going to be giving you in terms of exposure to research, the training, the resources, the mentorship. So I do want you to be cautious about kind of assuming that undergraduate research falls in the same bucket as an internship, as an employment opportunity. It's kind of a different kind of enterprise and it requires a commitment on the part of the faculty member as much as on the part of you. So can you partake in more than one research experience? Certainly, and as Arthur's just said, sometimes you'll do something in an academic year and then you'll go somewhere else and do something in the summer but I would want you to be very conscious about looking to engage deeply and over time, rather than just kind of cherry picking for the sake of doing it. The other thing that came up is this kind of creative inquiry, journalism, the arts. Um, we have worked really hard over the last number of years to build out opportunities at the Smart Museum for Curatorial Research with our colleagues at the Court Theater to support the theater productions that are being lifted up at the court with the OI, with other research institutes and with campus partners, the Field Museum, the Art Institute, the Newberry Library. Because actually the word research is simply this, to re-look or look again and to search. And of course, anyone in any field who's serious about this work, whether it's journalism 
or cinema and media studies or English language and literature or art is gonna be doing something similar. And that is an act of seeking out and understanding and introducing new ways of seeing something that might in fact have been looked at before, but you're looking at it in a new way. So don't self-select out of research because you tend to exclusively think of it in the context of STEM. Uh, at the University of Chicago, you are going to be invited into spaces that you might not ever have thought would allow for undergraduate research. And that makes it a very exciting place to be. So really fantastic questions. So I'll quickly answer uh, the two library related questions. First, uh, is it possible to have a job in the library? Yes, definitely. Um, that is actually where I got my start in librarianship as I worked at the D'Angelo Law Library as an undergraduate. Um, so yes, there are plenty of different jobs. There's lots of different options, um, everything from front facing customer service to working with some of these collections and special collections, the archives. Um, we have a preservation department that is um, has students working on bindings of books and preserving our collections. So there's lots of different opportunities and you can feel free to apply. Um, you could visit our HR department and submit an application when you arrive on campus. Um, in terms of the hours uh, for a library, we are not open 24 hours. Um, we do have late hours in Regenstein Library, but currently we do not have 24 hour access. Um, you do need to sleep though. I, I do. I think that that's something to keep in mind that health and wellness is really important. Um, we want you to study. We're happy that you are interested in staying in the library, but we also want you to get your rest. So we do have late hours, but just not 24 hours. Fantastic reminder, Rebecca. And as a shameless plug, the student wellness webinar is on July 13th. Highly recommend you check it out. I'm happy to take the last question that's there. And I think we might have time for a few more too. So don't be shy. So the question is about whether or not you apply for undergraduate research. So this is a nice follow on to what I've just said. Do not think about undergraduate research as a job. Undergraduate research is predicated on relationship, and Arthur has just suggested that one of the things you spend time doing is paying attention to your faculty and building your academic network. The majority, if not almost exclusively, all undergraduate research opportunities are found by students getting to know faculty in classes, in other contexts, in departmental events and conferences, in paying attention to the people writing the books you're reading, and making a point of using office hours. You might also find them through peers. So I, rec I recommended going to the undergraduate research symposium. Your peers are doing research and they're gonna know who are the active faculty mentors. Of course we do as well. So when we are talking with students and individual advising, we may be able to direct you to physics professor X who historically has six to 10 undergraduate researchers a year, but that's not always gonna be the case. And you're not gonna find a job board that actually lists positions because faculty are not inclined to do that because again, they're not hiring employees. They're thinking about a student who's interested in the work enough to A, acknowledge that they don't know anything. So be brave, that's where we all start, but is interested in enough to spend time learning about their research and ultimately wanting to do the research with them. So they're, they themselves are thinking about this as a relationship. So no, there's no formal application typically. Sometimes and often faculty will ask for a CV. We encourage you to read a little bit about what they're doing in advance of meeting with them, demonstrate genuine interest in what they're doing. They are usually very happy to talk about their research. Very few people actually ask them to do that. Um, and then I would say also anticipate that it won't happen right away. It won't be the first time outreach or the first email that you send. And that's why we want you at our information sessions. We're gonna give you strategies and how you think about getting to know faculty, how you appropriately reach out to them, how you honor their time and understand the significance of what they're inviting you to do. What I will then say though, is if you're applying for funding, so we run a number of grant programs, those have applications, those have deadlines, and we're training you up to be good applicants for future things like graduate school, like the fellowships that Arthur was talking about. So, so yes, eventually there'll be applications for the grants that will support your research, um, but you don't necessarily have an application process to actually secure a research appointment. 
Just adding on what Nicole said too, the librarians can help you with this too. You can do a literature review to see what the, your, the faculty member that you're meeting with is working on. Um, so you go in prepared to talk with them about what they're doing and you have questions available. Um, so we can, we can direct you and show you how you can um, discover what they're working on and um, what they've written. I see another question. What types of academic support does the library provide tutoring? Uh, well, we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one consultations with students uh, on anything about the library. So uh, we do have uh, staff that work in different specialties. We have um, a data librarian for the social sciences. We have a GIS librarian. Uh, we have a librarian that works with digital scholarship. So if you're looking to do uh, text analysis or create digital projects, uh, you can consult with them. Uh, we do workshops and training sessions throughout the year. Uh, we highlight, uh, I've highlighted Zotero, which is a great tool to help you stay organized. Um, and really, uh, I think it's very helpful. I get a lot of, we get a lot of feedback from students on how helpful having a system for organizing all of their research documents is. So we provide um, instruction on those sorts of tools. Um, we, um, so it's more one on one often um, specifically about what you're working on in terms of writing and language there are other tutors on campus um, that the college could uh, talk more about about the, the college tutors program the writing program that provides um, support for students. Um, as well, we refer people all the time to our various campus partners and what resources are available to you. Fantastic. And I'll throw the link in the chat where this will be recorded, as well as our previous academic resources webinar from last week. I would recommend checking out, especially on the tutoring and the advising side of things. So if you didn't get to see that live, I would go ahead and look at that. And then this one will be uploaded very shortly. As soon as we're able to get it onto YouTube and linked, you'll be able to find it there. And other than that, thank each of you so much um, for joining us, our, our special guests today. And if you have any questions at all, you can also find our contact information on that same website that I just sent in the chat. So thank each of you and have a wonderful rest of your day.